I began by removing the old canopy, taking care to keep one of the triangles preserved so I could use it as a template to cut out the new fabric. Next, I cut a mock-up out of an old bed sheet. I've never done this before, and I was going to be working with the most expensive fabric that I've ever purchased, so I wanted to make absolutely sure I would get it right, even though I had the template right there and I knew it was the right size. I did not want to take any chances with this. Here I'm just pinning the mock-up onto the frame, and I did just pin it on, I didn't bother stitching it on because that would have been very tedious and I didn't need this to last for any amount of time, I just needed to be able to open it and examine it, make sure it looked all right, and then take it down. So just pinning it on, making sure it wasn't too tight or anything. Honestly, I was surprised by how well the mock-up worked. I don't know why I was surprised, since I literally just copied that from the original canopy, so duh, of course it's going to fit, but there it is. I think it worked out very, very well. So then it was time to cut out the fashion fabric, which was very scary. Cutting out the fashion fabric was incredibly nerve-wracking. As I've said before, this is the most expensive fabric I've ever purchased. I believe it was $40 a yard. I only needed a yard and a quarter of it, so it wasn't that bad, but it was still very jarring to spend $50 on a yard and a quarter of fabric. It was also incredibly slippery and shifty. It did not want to stay put, so as I was cutting it out, I was never quite sure if each piece was the same size as all of the other pieces. I was doing my best, but it was very difficult to get this fabric to behave. So let's just say that I was sweating a lot during the process of cutting this all out, and I was really nervous until I got the whole thing onto the final parasol and had opened it up to see if it fit, because I had no way of knowing until then. Luckily it all worked out, but this was a very nerve-wracking process. Next it was time to actually sew these panels up, and I did this with French seams. The original one was done with just normal seams with the edges left raw, and I would have been terrified to do that, but they survived for over a hundred years, so clearly the original maker knew what, knew what he was doing. However, the fabric that I am using is uh, very, very uh, prone to fraying. It really just wants to completely unravel itself, so I knew if I didn't cover those raw edges somehow, I would not have a parasol after using it maybe three times. It would have just kind of disintegrated into into string. So I decided I had to do French seams, and I think they came out very nicely. To do a French seam, you sew the fabric together, wrong sides together, so it looks like you've got a raw edge on the outside where you wouldn't want it, and then you iron that seam open and fold it over and iron it over again, and then sew it closed so that raw edge is encased within another seam and there are no raw edges and there's a kind of a ridge on the inside uh, where the wrong edge is. But there are no raw edges and nothing untoward on the outside, and it's a really, really great way of hiding all of the raw edges and making everything very neat and tidy. The edge of the original was just the selvage of the fabric. I don't know if you can really see that, but they it's the selvage, and then they turned it over because the selvage has a little bit of not ribbed part. So I wanted to do that with mine, but I just don't have enough selvage fabric. I don't have enough selvage to do that. One of the panels had to be cut without the selvage, so I just cut them all without the selvage, and I got this 
Petersham ribbon that I'm just going to use to bind the edge and it's going to have a similar look. So I am going to, I, I put the silk uh, umbrella part, cover part on here just to test it out and it worked well. So I'm going to take it off and uh, pin the Petersham ribbon on to the edge and then I will, I probably should sew it on by hand to make it more invisible, but I'm probably going to do it by machine. You're never gonna guess what I'm doing here. Go on, guess, I dare you. You'll never get it. I'm sewing the Petersham ribbon on as a binding. Yep, I know. I know you thought I was gonna leave it just pinned, but I actually decided to sew it on because I really do like to go that extra mile for historical accuracy. So here I am putting the canopy, that's the what the cloth part is called, the canopy. I'm putting the canopy over the frame or the skeleton of the parasol, and this was actually really hard. I did leave a hole there at the top, but I had a lot of trouble getting the spike of the parasol through that hole. So you see I had to trim some, some excess away there. And I didn't really have a way of professionally finishing it off, so I just kind of jerry-rigged this whole thing. I just shoved it through and kind of wrapped some thread around it very tightly to keep it all in place and to I whipped around any little bits of raw edge that might have been up there and just kind of made it work in not a very professional way, but it works, so who really cares how professional it is? And then I sewed the edges of the parasol onto the points of the skeleton, or of the frame. Next I had to tack the seams of the parasol down to the ribs, the frame, the skeleton, the pointy parts, whatever you want to call them, just to make sure that the pressure points stayed on the seams and it looks elegant. It, it wouldn't look good if the ribs kind of were able to wiggle around and make strange ridges in the parasol, so you tack them down at a couple of points just along each ridge. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just watch the video and you'll see what I'm doing. Uh, but it, it, the parasol needs to be open when you're doing this, so I brought it outdoors because I'm kind of a superstitious person and I do not believe in opening umbrellas indoors. Nicole Rudolph may not care about getting cursed, but I most certainly do. Then all there was left to do was to make a tiny little tube to go around the parasol and keep it closed, the little strap. And here's the finished product. It didn't come out perfectly, but I think it's pretty, pretty good for a first attempt, certainly good enough for government work. Uh, I love how I can use it as a kind of walking stick, so it doesn't just have to be tucked under my arm when I'm not using it. And of course, it also works wonderfully as a parasol, as it's intended to. There is one uh, of the ribs that is poking out, it's there on the left, it's poking out a little bit at an awkward angle, but it's not incredibly noticeable, so I'm happy with it. 
I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, turn on the bell notification and share, and I think that's everything. A huge, huge thank you to Mary Royal, Kit Kat Stitch, Emily Donnelly, Sandra White, and V Birchwood for sponsoring this channel on Patreon. If you would also like to sponsor this channel on Patreon, I'll leave a link down below. If not, no hard feelings, I completely understand. Uh, I'm also gonna leave a link to my uh, Instagram where you should follow me. And unlike Patreon, following me on Instagram is completely free. So there's no excuse for not doing that. Uh, and I hope to see you around here next time. Bye-bye.